Hey friends, I just got back from a trip to Salem's Lot, also known as Ferndale, California. The filming locations of the 1979 miniseries Salem's Lot, my favorite movie of all time. I was able to spend a lot of time with my good buddies and my brothers from other mothers, uh, Sam Straub from Conglomeration Cat, and also Ben Ottaviano, also known as Boogeyman Ben, the master of all things horror, and Sam's incredible, amazing wife, Lauren. We just had the best time. Now, if you've seen my channel before, you know I've done videos on the filming locations of Salem's Lot, and I will show you those locations in this video as well, but I also thought I'd do something a little different this time. This is my third visit, and I was thinking, you know, I have this down. I know how to get here and where everything is, but I've seen so many comments on social media about people saying, one day I am going to make it to Ferndale, and I am going to see the locations one day. I, this is kind of their bucket list trip uh, place to go. And so I thought this time in this video, yes, I'll show you the filming locations, but also I want to tell you all the things you need to know to book your trip. I'll tell you places to stay. I'll also tell you how to get there, the best way to come into town. And I'm going to take you down Main Street and show you how to get to everything you want to see. That's all on this episode. Well, let's get to it. So if you're like me, it's not that easy to drive to Ferndale. So the best thing to do is to fly. The best airline to take is United Airlines because they fly into Eureka Arcata Airport located in McKinleyville, which is north of Ferndale. Now, actually, Ferndale is off to the left there in the video, but you can't land in Ferndale. So go to Eureka McKinley Arcata Airport, and from there, you can easily get a rental car and drive straight to Ferndale. The easiest things are to fly to either Denver, Colorado, or San Francisco, California. They have regular flights from both of those airports. If you book through United, they automatically make all your connections work. So I just book straight through United Airlines for all my flights and it works. And when you land in Arcata, this is a really small airport. You're not gonna get off and go into the building directly. You have to go down this nice little ramp here outside. Yes, they don't connect directly to the building. It is a really short walk from the airplane to the building though. This little building you see is the entire airport. You'll go through these doors and these next doors and once you get inside, baggage claim is right there on the right and you'll see the rental car kiosk. Once you get your car, you're just gonna step right outside and it's a short walk to your car and you're gonna get on the 101 South. It's really close to the airport. You're gonna drive straight south and you'll finally get to the Ferndale exit. When you get off the exit, you're gonna turn right, just like we're doing right here. Right up here, you're gonna to come to a gas station and an intersection. Now keep this in mind because when you're coming back to the airport to go home, this is a good place to stop and fill up because you have to turn in that rental car full of gas, right? When you get to this intersection at the gas station, you're gonna turn right. And as soon as you turn right, you are right there at the Ferndale Bridge. Once you get over this bridge, it is a straight path all the way into Ferndale. This road is actually Main Street in Ferndale. It'll turn into Main Street. So you just keep going straight over the bridge all the way into Ferndale. At this point, we only have a few miles left, so let's kick it in high gear and go to Salem's Lot.
to this point here, you are entering Ferndale, Salem's Lot. I'm going to take you all the way to the very end of the street where it dead ends, but we're going to make a few stops along the way, and I'll show you how to get to some of your favorite spots from the movie. Now up here we're getting ready to make a stop. You might recognize these buildings on the right. This is Holly Elementary School where Susan Norton teaches. So we're gonna stop here and take a look around. There is where Ben and Susan are walking and she notices Ned Tebbets sitting across the street. Right there. And of course, you know that conversation does not go very well for Ned, and he is going to take off right here and turn right and head down the street. All right, back at the intersection, let's keep going down Main Street. Now you'll see a church up on the left. That is actually not the church from the movie, but I will show you that one in just a minute. Right up here on the right, we're gonna make a stop. You see that sign on the right? That is the Shaw House Inn. The Shaw House Inn is actually Susan Norton's house. Their conversations outside took place right there in that driveway. I didn't go up to the house this time, but you can look at some of my previous visits to Salem's Lot where I did get a closer look. And here you can see where Jason and Ben came and turned into the driveway right after seeing Marjorie Glick raised from the dead. Let's get back on Main Street and head into town. We're gonna go just a short distance and we have an intersection right up ahead we're gonna stop at. Now notice this building on the left, it says Stifle. That building is actually the restaurant where, or I should say the cafe where Ben and Susan are talking at lunch. It looks a lot different nowadays. They've changed the inside completely. They've built some walls, but you can see some defining factors from the movie. From this angle here, you can see the windows above the door that go along both sides. Those windows are definitely noticeable in the movie behind Ben and Susan. And if we swing around this way, you can see some of those buildings that were in the background behind Ben and Susan. Now let's go back to the intersection, but this time we're actually gonna turn right. This is Shaw Avenue, and as soon as we start walking down Shaw Avenue, you'll probably notice something in the distance that you recognize. It is the church from the movie. This is where Ben stops, runs in, and gets holy water. You can see him running out at the end of the movie to get in his Jeep with Bill Norton. And here's a little closer look for you. Looks pretty much the same as it did when they filmed it. Now let's go back to the intersection of Main Street and Shaw Avenue. We're going to head straight down the street and start getting into the real heart of the town. Now I've slowed it down a little bit here because there are all kinds of shops and restaurants, mom and pop stores, a lot of great places to walk in and support. These people are such great people in Ferndale. So we want to support them. Now I'm going to stop right here. And on the left, you'll see up there is Washington Street. Now I'm going to take a left here and go down Washington Street because I want to show you a few things down that direction. 
Now, as we start walking down Washington Street, you'll see another church in the distance. Some people confuse this church with the one that's in the movie because they do look similar. But this is actually not the church that is in the movie. That one's on Shaw. This one here is next to Washington. This church lights up blue at night and it is absolutely beautiful. Now on the right down there from the church, you'll see the well-known gingerbread house, a great place to stay. Now as we start walking down the street, I wanna stop and show you this. This is my Airbnb that I've stayed at three different times. The owner is Miss Eunice and she is a walking history book, an incredibly nice person. It's like going home every time I stay there. Let's keep going down Washington Street and speed up a little bit. We're gonna pass this street and right up ahead, we're gonna to come to another street. And this one is called McKinley. Now you wanna turn left on McKinley and take a little walk right up the road past several houses and you're gonna see something that you recognize on the left. This is Jason Burke's house from the movie. Remember they're out in front talking about their surprise at how soon Mike would be riding in the back? Well, that's where it took place. Now we're gonna get back on Washington Street and head to the left. If you pass McKinley, right up here, we're gonna stop and off in the distance, this is the road where Ben Mears comes into town at the beginning of the movie. Now I didn't go up there this time, but but you can see it in some of my previous videos. But right up there is where he comes into town. Now let's turn around and walk back. Now as you walk back on Washington Street toward Main Street, you can see the Marston House location in the distance. Okay, back on Main Street, let's continue going down toward the end. We're passing more great little stores and restaurants. Also, our favorite coffee shop, Mind's Eye. We have to get coffee there pretty much every single morning. They have great hot chocolate as well. On the left is the Ferndale Meat Company, and up ahead you'll see Valley Grocery on the right. This is your main grocery store to get anything you need. On the left there is Rexall Drugs, kind of an old school drug store, really awesome. There's the grocery store. Now you're gonna come up to an intersection right here that you'll probably recognize. Ben Mears drives down this road. The camera would have been opposite from us. And right here on the left is the Victorian Inn. You can stay there, you can eat there, they have really good food. It's kind of an upscale restaurant, but it's really good. And the owners are super nice and helpful, very friendly and personable. Mark would have been standing right there as Ben turned at the beginning of the movie. He was standing right there by that window. Back at the intersection, we're gonna to go to the right this time. First thing we're gonna to come to is the school. This is the elementary school, and this is the back side of it. The other side was actually used as the hospital in the movie, but we'll show you that in just a second. So let's speed up and go forward a little bit more and then I have another site that you'll definitely recognize. This is Parkins Gillespie's house on the left. So if we move around to the other angle and get a shot of the driveway, this is where Ben and Parkins Gillespie were talking at the end of the movie. He's cutting out of town, he's scared and he takes off and goes to the right, right there. If we swing around to the left though, I wanna show you something really cool here. We're gonna stop and look at the road right in front of us. When you have a few minutes, 
take that road and go several miles and you will actually come to the beach it is so beautiful it is an amazing beach and you just really really have to see it and it's a little too cold to swim pretty much year round but you can go out there and just take in the sights and get some peace and calm for a while now if we turn right right here and go back up we're actually on Shaw Avenue again where the church from the movie is but we're going to stop right up here on the right because this is the front side of the school so you'll now recognize this as the hospital from the movie okay so we're back at the intersection we went right this time we're going to go left on bluff street We walk down the street, we're going to stop right here at this church. You can see this church at the beginning of the movie anytime it looks straight down that road. And if you look up webcams in Ferndale, California, you'll find the owl cam. That's actually up in the top of that steeple on the right right there. But it's called the old steeple. They have events there now. It's pretty cool. And on the right is the Ferndale Cemetery. Yes, where they buried Danny Glick or where at least they thought they were going to bury Danny Glick. We'll take you up into the cemetery in just a few minutes. If we keep walking on Bluff Street along the cemetery, we come across this house right here across the street from it on the left. This is Eva Miller's boarding house. This is where Ben was staying. You can see Susan Norton coming up those steps and knocking on the door at the end of the movie. And if we swing around to the right side of the building there, we can look up and see Ben's bedroom. And of course, we all remember that shot of Ben sitting in the window. If we swing back around and keep going straight on Bluff Street, we're gonna take a short trip, a nice little walk on the sidewalk. We're still passing some of the cemetery. We're actually gonna pass another small section of the cemetery on the right. It's kind of separate from the other. It is connected by a small little path, but there it is on the right. And now we're at the site of the Marston House. This is where it stood. Of course, we all know that it was a facade built around the house, and we all wish it were still standing today. And of course, this is an angle looking back a little bit. This is where Ben parked his Jeep at night looking up at the house and of course Straker was behind him and scared him to death back at the intersection let's go straight again continue on main street we're going to stop right up here and look to the left that is crockett realty there's a nice closer shot of it we see quite a few shots of that and hey there's a little look inside we can almost see boom boom bonnie's desk in there but it's not there anymore go up just a tad more and we see the house where Weasel was sitting, right there on those steps. If we go up just a tad more, we see Parkins Gillespie's office on the left. And then of course now, we're gonna go forward a little bit more and see something that everybody recognized, and that is Barlow and Straker's antique shop. This is an Airbnb, and yes, you can stay there. You can book it. And actually right beside it in the same property is the Barn Dominium. You can book that as well. This is where our buddy Sam and his wife Lauren stayed this time when we were there. And if we look off to the left, we can see the cemetery in the distance. If we go straight ahead, this road is actually going to dead end into a place called Fireman's Park. Now we believe with about 90% surety that Fireman's Park is where they filmed the search party for Ralphie Glick. Now it could have possibly been in that field, but we don't think so. We believe it's one of these fields right here based on what we see in the movie. It could very well be that field there. There's another one off to the left that it could possibly be as well but we tend to lean toward that one right there we have gotten some confirmation from some locals that it was filmed in fireman's park we just don't know the exact place but this is a really small area so it pretty much has to be here
And now let's just take in some scenes from our trip to Salem's Lot. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Ferndale, California, Salem's Lot, and uh, we just had the best time. And so I hope that you now have the tools to book your trip to Ferndale. It is just a magical town. Even if you don't necessarily love Salem's Lot, you will love the town. You'll love the people. You'll love their friendly nature and just how they want to help you and just be kind and just hang out and talk to people. It's just a magical town. So be sure to book your trip. But until I see you on the next video, I wish for you and all your family and friends peace and blessings, and I'll see you soon.